again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, so this is something that we're doing uh, to help in a virtual world. So a lot of us have the opportunity to connect with our startup company, uh, excuse me, to connect with our strategic partners and customers on a daily basis, provide them with tidbits of what's going on, excite them, um, ask questions, make connections, things of that nature. And right now, a lot of, a lot of that is changing. So as we're going online, uh, we felt that it was important to take a look at your company's virtual presence, which is social media. And one thing that we're really good at UACI at doing is bringing together the experts and the startups uh, so, that, uh, so that we're hearing from a myriad of people that have that deep domain experience. Uh, so one thing uh, for our startup companies, for example, we have a resource page on LinkedIn and we thought that's a great way to integrate um, a platform that you're already using or should be using uh, so that you don't have an additional login or a group of emails or things of that nature that you need to be tracking. But what we found in doing that is that a lot of startups, both the entrepreneurs as well as the companies themselves could improve their LinkedIn um, and they could improve their, their Twitter, their Facebook, their um, you know other social media platform presences. So um, we are very fortunate today uh, to have uh, Bree Mitch, excuse me, Bree Richmond with us from Caliber Marketing. And, uh, and Bree uh, just told us that she will have no problem filling up uh, 45 minutes. So get ready for a load of information. Um, and, uh, and I think with that, uh, unless there are any questions, I will, uh, I will leave it to Bree. So Bree, go ahead. All right, thank you very much, Eric. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Hopefully everybody can see my presentation. <clears throat> so first of all, just thanks to UACI and Tech Parks for inviting me to speak today about social media strategies and tactics for startups. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I am a native Tucsonan, a proud graduate of the U of A. Um, I have over 20 years of experience in the marketing and advertising industry. Um, I am the account director at Caliber Group, which is a brand marketing digital PR firm here in Tucson. Um, and what we really specialize in is helping businesses grow and building value through strategic planning, brand storytelling, and integrated marketing campaigns. In my specific role, I'm mainly responsible for managing client relationships with a very diverse set of clients. Um, ranging from local businesses to global organizations, startups, enterprise companies. We work in both the B2B and B2C spaces um, in lots of different industries from biotech to education to technology. Um, I also work on the high level strategy, but I'm also responsible for managing the tactical marketing campaigns, making sure they're successful, reporting on those campaigns to our clients. So, um, and we always want to make sure that our social media um, uh, tactics and strategies ladder up to our overarching marketing goals, which ladder up to the business goals. So um, with that, I have a ton of information to share with you guys today. Um, I'm going to start with um, why you should include social media in your marketing strategy. And then I'm going to tell you a bit about how to create a social media strategy. We're going to take a deeper dive into LinkedIn and um, Facebook. I wanted to include Twitter, but I just don't think we have quite enough time. But I feel like LinkedIn and Facebook are super important. So we're going to talk about those, um, it, even getting into the how to on some of it. Um, and then we're going to talk a bit about working remotely with a team. If you have a team that you need to engage in, in implementing your strategy, I'll give you a couple tips on that. And then lastly, clue you into some um, incentives companies like Facebook and Hootsuite are offering at this time. So, so let's get started. So, you know, why would you include social media in your marketing plan? There's a lot of benefits for businesses. If you consider that there are almost 4 billion people using social networks right now. Um, more people follow brands on social media than follow celebrities. For example, about 80% of Instagram users follow at least one business. So if you're not taking advantage of social, you're really missing out on a lot of people on a fast, inexpensive, 
effective way to reach almost half of the world's population. So I'll take you through some quick ways about, you know, how social media can help you connect, engage, and grow your business. Uh, the first way is brand building. So through social media, you can really increase brand awareness. So, you know, there's a ton of people available to you, a lot of eyeballs on your content. So there's a lot of impressions to be had. Um, they, a lot of people connect with brands that they don't know and actually find new brands through social media. About 60% of Instagram users say they discover new products on the platform. It's also a really great way to humanize your brand. Um, more than half of adults don't really trust a brand until they see real world proof that it's keeping its promises. So it's really important to connect with your customers and your potential customers um, in a way that shows the human side of your brand, um, shows them how you're embracing your brand values. Do you have brand values? How are you looking out for their best interests? And it's also a great way to establish your brand as a thought leader. No matter what your industry, social media lets you establish your brand as a thought leader, as a go-to source for information on topics that are in your niche. Um, and it's a great way to build consumer trust. It's also a good way to stay top of mind. Most people log into social media several times a day, um, and it really gives you an opportunity to connect with them multiple times, to gain followers, um, to you know, reach them with content that really represents your brand well. Um, and then that way they'll be top of mind when they're ready to make a purchase. Another way social media is good for business, it helps you grow your business. Um, it, it can help you increase your website traffic. Um, if you use your post to, if you have a blog, for example, on your website, you can use your social media channels to promote that blog and link back to your website. Or if you're just posting new content on your website, it's a good way to cross promote. It's actually really good at generating leads too. It's a really low commitment way for people to express interest in your products and services because um, lead gen is really important. Um, social media is actually really uh, up to the game in terms of the strategies and ads and things that they have available to generate leads. You can run specific campaigns that are, are totally aimed at just getting you leads, which you can use to uh, market through email or you can, you know, do phone calls, etc. Um, you can also boost sales through social media, um, <clears throat> you know, I think as people um, use e-commerce and different parts of the marketing funnel, you should be aligning your social marketing goals with your sales goal goals and make sure that they tie back to your business goals as well. Um, you can partner with influencers, so people that, you know, have a, a large reach on social media really can help amplify your voice. Word of mouth drives 20 to 50% of purchasing decisions. So um, the more you can get, you know, partner up with influencers and people who have a, lot, a large following on social media, the more you can draw attention to your brand. Another way that social is good for business is uh, for creating and distributing content. So um, if you can get your content in front of a lot of new people and prove your expertise and grow your audience, that's always a good thing. Um, if you can get some certain posts and things to go viral by having people like, comment on them, you know, your, your reach is exponentially um, increased. Um, if your friends and followers share it and then their friends and followers share it, um, it's really getting more bang for your buck or, or more you know, return on your time investment um, than, let's say, you know, using social media or some type of traditional advertising. Um, another way is uh, sourcing content. It's actually a really good way uh, to source ideas from your followers on what types of things they're interested in. So that way you can give them more of what they're asking for. Um, and you can also use it for something called user generated content. It's a really nice way to have other people help you um, put um, material on your social channels by creating a contest or a hashtag or something like that um, that will uh, allow them to contribute to posting on your channel. Communicating with audiences. Um, 
you know, really there's no better uh, platform for communication and engagement than social media. Um, you can use it for reputation management, um, becoming a part of the conversation about what people are saying about your brand. Um, if someone's saying something that's not true, then you can share your side of the story. Um, if someone's singing your praises, then you can thank them. Uh, you can also use it for crisis communication. So um, it's sort of an open communication channel for two-way dialogue between your brand and your audience. Um, definitely customer and audience engagement. Um, it's a great way to interact directly with your customers and fans and let them interact directly with you. Um, unlike traditional communication, which, or I'm sorry, traditional media, which only allows for one-way communication. Um, and so if you want your followers to be engaged, then you have to be engaged yourself and you have to stay active and respond to comments and questions. You can also offer customer service and support. Um, people really expect um, brands to be available on social media and uh, to be able to access them that way for social or for customer service. Actually, uh, Harvard Business Review uh, published, some, published some research that showed that brands who don't meet their expectations through social damage their bottom line. An another way that social media uh, benefits business is by helping you gain insights. So you can monitor conversations that are relative to your brand. So social media monitoring, very important. Um, you can uh, find out more about what people are saying about your brand, your competitors, your niche. Um, you can also learn more about your customers. Uh, social media generates a very large amount of data about your customers in real time. So you can use that to make smarter business decisions. Um, there's a lot of analytics you can dig into in all the major social platforms that will help you tailor your strategy to speak better to your real audiences. You can help uh, gauge sentiment around your brand. So social media sentiment is defined as the perceived positive or negative mood being portrayed in a social media post or engagement. So typically it's great to get lots of mentions and likes and things, but you have to make sure that the sentiment is a positive one. Um, it's important to know how people really feel about your brand, and this is a great way to do it. Also helps you keep an eye on your competition. So you can track mentions of your competitors, and maybe that'll reveal a pain point that some people are experiencing with their products that you can use as an opportunity to then cater to those audiences and address those needs. It's a great way to stay on top of industry news as well, so you can kind of keep your ear to the ground um, so you're always informed about upcoming changes to your industry that could affect the way that you do business. And the last way that social is good for your business is through advertising. You really can't target advertising uh, better in any platform than through social. Um, they're a great in inexpensive way to promote your business, distribute content. Um, you can do short campaigns, long campaigns, and refine and hone them as you go. You can also retarget people. Let's say someone visited your website and didn't quite complete a conversion, which we would consider something like a website form fill or something like that. You can actually use a Facebook pixel on your website. And then if you, if that person then visits Facebook, you can have ads target them that will show up that, you know, would be for the exact products that they were looking at on your website, for example. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the ways that social media can benefit your business, let's talk about um, how to create a social media strategy. What a social media strategy is, it's really a summary of everything that you plan to do and you hope to achieve on social media. Um, it guides your actions and it lets you know whether you're succeeding or failing. And every you know, post, reply, like, comment, everything should serve a purpose. The more specific your strategy is, the more effective your execution will be. So this is a really important step you should not skip. You can keep it concise though, and you shouldn't make it too lofty or broad that it's unattainable or impossible to measure. So the first step is to um, <clears throat> align your marketing goals to your business objectives by setting SMART goals. 
SMART goals are you know, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Um, it, it will guide your actions and ensure that your, your goals lead up to your business results. And this way you can prove ROI, return on investment. You should also be sure you're tracking meaningful metrics. You can always easily track vanity metrics like retweets, likes, etc. but do they really have value? Um, instead, it's really important to look at things like leads generated, web referrals, conversion rates, um, and you might want to track different goals for different channels or maybe even different goals for different uses of each channel. So here's an example of how we would track social media goals to the metrics that we're going to use to prove whether or not the, the, the goal was success, successfully met and then how that ladders up to the business objective. So for awareness, for example, if that was a social media goal, um, then you know, you'd be able to measure that by followers, shares, etc. And then you know, that shows how you're growing the brand. You know, if your social media goal was engagement, you would track that by comments, likes, mentions, and that would ladder up to being able to turn customers into advocates. So another important step is learning everything you can about your audience by creating audience personas. This is an example of a, a, an exercise we often perform at Caliber Group. It's part of a brand roadmap where we dig into um, an audience's demographics, psychographics, purchase drivers, hobbies, interests, everything we can possibly know about them. So we sort of flesh them out and make them alive human beings so we can sort of think more as they would think and understand more about what types of things they're interested in, what are their pain points, where can you reach them, that type of thing. Um, this really lets you think like them and be able to make choices that, that will reach them more effectively. You also want to make sure you gather real world data. We might think we know where, you know, a certain demographic or a certain group of people might spend most of their time on social media, for example, but it might not be the case. So you want to find people where they live, what languages they speak, how they interact with your brand on social so that you can refine your strategy and better target your approach. You definitely want to research the competition. Um, you can conduct a competitive analysis where um, you're really, you know, sort of looking at your top competition and figuring out what channels they're on. You know, perhaps one of them is really dominant on Facebook and hasn't really put anything on Twitter. So maybe your, your strategy could be to focus more on networks that your audience, where, where their audience is underserved so that um, you can win fans without having to try to take take it away from a dominant player. Um, it might be a better use of your time and energy. Uh, engage in social listening. Um, this is a great way to keep an eye on the competition. You can track competitive accounts. There's even a place in Facebook where you can add your competitors and it'll show you how you're performing against them, you know, week up over week. Um, and then, you know, relevant industry keywords are good to track. Um, you can, even if they're doing something well, that might be something that you want to incorporate into your strategy or if something that they do totally bombs that could be something you would totally avoid on your strategy, um, but just use it to evaluate your own goals and plans. And then you want to look at yourself. What are you currently doing? If you're doing something, uh, what channels are you using? Um, you should be asking the following questions what's working and what's not, who is connecting with you on social, uh, which networks does your target audience use. Um, and so that way you can kind of decide if it's something that you should continue to do, if it's worth keeping. Um, you, if you're going to include a channel in your strategy, um, you really want to ask, is this, is my audience here? Is this platform? Um, and can I use this account to help achieve meaningful business goals? It's really important if you're going to, you know, go, go into social that you're doing it really well. It's better to pick, you know, strategically fewer platforms and really do them properly than to try everything and just see what sticks.
So once you've um, got your, your plan together, then you can um, set up and optimize your account, uh, create your profiles or, you know, improve your existing profiles so they uh, align with your strategic plan. Uh, you want to make sure that all of your profile fields are filled out and everything, that you're using keywords that people use to search for your business, um, that you're really taking the time to size images properly for each particular platform, um, and that you're really doing each one as well as you can. Okay, so now we'll dig into some platforms. Um, so we're going to look at a couple that are the most effective uh, that for businesses in marketing their brand. Um, there's so many channels out there that we could look at, but for the sake of time, we're going to look at two of the most important ones, LinkedIn and Facebook. So LinkedIn has roughly 562 million users, and they're really all about building connections and networking. Um, it's really about not just who you know, but who your connections know. Um, and they really, their power lies in the ability to tap into connections and grow your brand through word of mouth. Um, it's actually the top rated social channel for lead generation as well. So this shows just a sort of like high level view of, you know, the, the demographics of the people that frequent LinkedIn. Um, there's 260 million monthly active users, and it's a great way to reach highly educated people with an income of 75,000 plus. A lot of people that use LinkedIn are located outside the U.S., so it has a global reach. Um, it's a really good place for B2B businesses to market their products and services because it's really easy to dig down um, and find people based on their company or industry, their level of education, their job title. Um, really the first, the first step in, in having a good company presence on LinkedIn is having a good personal presence first. Uh, your personal LinkedIn uh, profile page is really the foundation for your personal branding. So we're going to talk about some easy ways to first improve your personal LinkedIn profile. So the first thing is you want to choose a good profile picture for LinkedIn. Um, it's really your calling card and it's how people are introduced to you since we're visual beings. So it, it's really the first impression. Um, so you want to make sure the picture is recent, that it looks like you, that, you know, uh, your face takes up about 60% of the picture. Long distance shots don't really work. Um, you want to wear something professional, something you'd wear to work, and you want to smile with your eyes. <laughs> And you also should make sure you're going the extra step and adding a background photo. So, you know, that's this area here above the profile. Um, it's the second thing that will help make an impression and it really grabs people's attention and makes your profile stand out. Um, it actually is, a, is a real estate that's valuable. You can use it to, you know, talk a little bit about your company or showcase some service or product that you offer. Um, and then your headline shouldn't just be a job title. There's really nothing that says that's all it has to be. It should really tell people a little bit more about you and how you see your role in the company that you work with and why you do what you do, and what makes you tick. Oops. Uh, the next part is turning your summary into your story. So the LinkedIn summary, uh, first of all, make sure you have one. A lot of people don't. They leave it blank and that's this is a really important part of your profile um you know it's not just about listing your job skills and your title and, and the places you've worked but it's really about bringing your experience to life um, and the difference that it can make to the people that you work with you shouldn't be you know scared of investing time writing a few drafts running it past some people um, it's really a personal piece of content marketing that's worth putting in the effort you also don't want to use buzzwords that are overused on LinkedIn if you can avoid it. Stuff like, you know, specialized, leadership, focused, strategic, you know. It, not that you can't use those words, it's just that, you know, it's not going to convince someone that you have those qualities. You're really going to have to show them as well. So um, there are different ways to do that in your LinkedIn profile to tell people, kind of show them what you're all about. Um, 
another thing is you're, you're going to want to grow your personal network through LinkedIn. Um, you can sync your profile with your email address book and then LinkedIn will suggest people that you should connect with. Um, which is a really great way uh, for LinkedIn to surface people that you might not have thought of, you know, being friends with on LinkedIn or connected to. Um, and nothing will happen without your permission, so you're totally in control of who, who you're connected to. Um, and then, you know, follow up meetings and conversations with people uh, with a LinkedIn request. You know, make sure that you're continuing to build that, um, your, your group, and you're uh, keeping your network vibrant and up to date. Also want to make sure you have a list of your relevant skills on your profile. Um, it's really easy to scroll through the list and identify the ones that are relevant to you, which will help substantiate the description in your headline and summary, and it'll uh, provide a platform for others to endorse you. Um, but you really want to stay relevant here. It's not just about having as many skills as you can possibly fit. It's really more about um, taking time to you know, make sure that the ones that you are really important in defining, you know, who you are and your business role are, are at the top. And you should probably revisit those every once in a while. So here's an example of a pretty good LinkedIn summary. Um, this is somebody who works at uh, SurveyMonkey. Uh, <clears throat> so she says she's uh, intellectually curious with a successful track record. Um, and the way that she proves it is by having an attention-grabbing opening that shows off her expertise. Um, and then she kind of sums up her accomplishments and experience in one impact sentence, which is this one here. Previously, I built and led the demand generation marketing team, bringing seven new products to market. And prior to joining SurveyMonkey, I worked in B2B marketing across the technology and financial service industries, helping companies generate revenue. So she's, you know, it's interesting. It's it's uh, it's got a little you know twist on it, but it, she's at the end of the day like showing you that she can prove that she does have the skills and experience that her profile says she does. Um, it's also important to spotlight the services you offer. This is actually a new LinkedIn feature that's available, um, and it lets you know people showcase the range of services um, and helps you boost your visibility in search results. Um, it also helps you to endorse others. So, you know, one great way to get endorsements yourself is to just endorse other people. Um, you know, if you go through your network and you identify connections that you feel really maybe deserve an endorsement from you, then um, that's sort of a cue for people then to return the favor. And you shouldn't be afraid to reach out with a nice message that says, would you endorse me on LinkedIn for key skills, but then you're going to want to make sure that, you know, like I said, the ones that are most important to you are showing up at the top. Um, and then, you know, managing them more proactively, um, making sure that, you know, the people that worked with you um, on a really deep level are more active endorsers. Um, uh, make sure you're editing those properly from time to time and then requesting recommendations, which is sort of endorsements, but, you know, to the next level. So this is sort of like a testimonial in a sort of way. Um, it's really sort of, you know, people illustrating the experience of working with you. Um, and there's a little a drop down menu in the recommendation section of your profile that makes it really easy for you to reach out to people for those. So once you have your profile up and running and filled out well, you're going to want to start sharing things. So, you know, you need to go on the platform fairly regularly and um, make sure that you're sharing things that, you know, resonate with you. Um, you can share your own marketing and media collateral like white papers and brand content and anything that really helps people understand what makes you tick and gives them a sense for your, your passion and commitment. Um, there's a, a feature called publications, which is really underused that can actually really help um, businesses. Uh, so, you know, if you've written an ebook or a white paper or even a blog post, you can uh, add it to the publication section of your LinkedIn profile, um, and that will give you an edge there. Sharing content from your LinkedIn feed. So anything that, you know, resonates with you, you can share it. 
Um, and then it's also good to add comments to make it even more, you know, apparent as to what about that particular article or piece of content, you know, resonated or didn't resonate with you. Um, you know, why was it of interest with you? Um, and that will be a way that people start to associate, you know, that type of content with you. Here's an example of um, how someone's using publications and skills for their LinkedIn profile. Um, you can see here that she's, you know, added the publications that she's contributed to here, which is really nice, and all the different skills that she has. And then you should follow relevant influencers from your industry. Um, they often put out really great content, so it's a super quick way to then be able to share that content and comment about something on it. And then you can publish long form content in the form of your own articles. Um, it, you know, if there's particular strategies, points of view that resonate with your network, you can speak specifically to those things. Um, if, the, if you've looked at posts that you've made and certain ones are performing really well, that's usually a sign that that's something people want to hear more about. And it really helps position you as a thought leader. Um, and shows people that you're really plugged into the issues that, you know, and connections that you're talking about. So it really is a good way to start conversations. Um, you're going to want to respond to comments on those as soon as you can, too. Okay, so that's about your personal profile on LinkedIn. So now we're going to talk about your company page. Um, so you really actually can't start a company page unless you have a personal page. So it's important to deal with that first. Um, but you do want to create a company page because they generally receive twice as many visitors than, um, than other pages, and especially the complete pages. You want to make sure you're filling out every single part of that page. Um, organizations that post monthly gain followers six times faster than those that don't. So that's important to keep in mind. It's something that you'll need to keep up on, but it's worth the investment. Um, there's a lot of different things you can post on your company page besides, yes, job postings. I think, you know, LinkedIn used to be viewed as just an HR landing page, but um, now there's lots of different capacities you can use LinkedIn for. Um, you can establish industry experts, you can talk about your business, your brand, etc. cetera. Um, it's a good way to educate people about your products and services, engage with people. So here's some of the basics of uh, starting your own company page. Um, so like I said, you'll have to get your, your personal page up and going first, and then you'll go to the LinkedIn Marketing Solutions Portal for creating company pages, and you'll click the big blue create a company page button. Um, then you're going to enter your official company name and choose the URL that people will use to find your business on LinkedIn. You really can't choose change this URL, so you really want to make sure that you're choosing wisely. And then you're going to click the box that says you have the right to act on behalf of the company, and then um, LinkedIn will uh, create the shell of your page, and then you'll just start filling in the details. And you're going to want to add a cover image and a logo. So the image should really capture the feel of your business. Um, there are specific sizes you should be using for LinkedIn specifically. It's 1536 by 768. Um, and then your logo should be square, roughly 300 pixels square, so that it, your logo is going to take the place of where your profile picture would on your personal page. And your logo will actually appear on your employees LinkedIn profiles as well. Um, I, again, I can't emphasize enough, don't skip this step. LinkedIn data shows that companies with logos are six times more likely to get traffic to their page. So then it's about creating a company description. So you have 2000 characters to describe what your company does and why people should care. Um, this is really important text, so you should put some thought into it. Um, the first 156 characters are really important because that's what's going to appear in the Google preview of your company page. Underneath your description, you can add up to 20 specialties. These act as tags or keywords that will help people find your business on LinkedIn. 
Um, so, you know, make sure your company's products, services, strengths are all well represented here. And if you're not sure what to include, you can do some social listening to see, you know, what people, what words people are already using to talk about your, your industry or your brand um, and try to think from your customer's point of view. And you're going to fill out the rest of the company details, you know, website, size, company type, all that stuff. You have to provide at least one location. Um, here's where if you already belong to some relevant LinkedIn groups um, that you'd like to feature on your company page, you can enter them in the appropriate section. And then you can publish your page and it will go live. Um, you want to make sure you go to the member view first. There's a member view button and make sure everything looks good. If not, go back into the editing mode and, and fine tune everything and then it'll be set up and ready. Um, there's some other steps you can use to optimize your page. Um, you don't have to be in it alone. You can add page administrators. Um, if there are people on your team that you want to also be able to post as your company or share things or update information, you can add them as admins. And I definitely wanted to speak briefly about LinkedIn groups. They're another great way to connect and engage with potential customers. They're basically hubs on LinkedIn that, that provide a place for professionals in the same industry or with similar interests to share content, find answers, post and view jobs. You make business contacts, establish themselves as leaders in the industry. So um, you should really try to find relevant groups to join and be active participants in those groups. Um, you can use the search feature in LinkedIn or you can select from the suggestions of groups you may like. Um, a lot of benefits come from being in groups. Um, if you're an active participant, it can help you and your network, your business network with other professionals in your field. So, you know, people that are outside of your immediate circle, outside of your contacts list, gives you um, exposure to them. Um, and, you know, current and past colleagues, classmates, employers, it does again position you as a thought leader if you're active in those discussions. Um, Okay, moving right along. Now we're to Facebook. So Facebook is a really important channel to include, mainly because of its reach. Um, it generally grows in size year over year, about 8%, um, and right now has about 1.6 billion daily users and 2.5 billion monthly users. Um, so it's a great way to reach potential customers. You can see here that, you know, the demographics of people that use Facebook are, you know, they're kind of all over. Um, 65 plus looks to be one of the lower age demographics, but it's actually the, the fastest growing on Facebook. Um, it is interesting to note that there's uh, more women than men on Facebook. 75% of women and 63% of men are on Facebook. Um, it's also a, a, a channel with a global reach, so not everyone is in this country. Um, but lots of different education backgrounds and income levels. So uh, before you can sign up for a Facebook business page, you need to log into your personal account. Uh, you don't have to worry that your personal information is going to be shared. It won't. It just links, links your personal account to your business page so that you can access it. So then you're going to want to go to facebook.com slash pages slash create. And from there, you're going to pick the type of page you want to create. Um, in this case, it'd probably be business or brand. Then you're going to want to enter your business information. Um, you know, use the, the name that most people would uh, search for when they're trying to find your business. For the category, you know, type a word or two that describes your business. Um, and Facebook will suggest some options. If your business falls into multiple categories, you should choose the one that your customers are most likely to think of when they think about your business. Again, keep this part really simple and think like your customers. Then you're going to upload your profile and cover images for Facebook. Um, again, you're making a visual first impression, so choose wisely. 
Uh, make sure that your images align with your brand and they're easily identifiable with your business. Your username is also called your URL, your vanity URL, and this is how you're going to tell people where to find you on Facebook. It'll be your, your handle, as they say. So it can be up to 50 characters long, but you don't necessarily want to use all those characters just because you can. You want it to be something that you can easily type and easy, easily remember. You just have to make sure someone else doesn't already have that handle. Um, your business name or some obvious variation is the best bet. And then you'll create a username. So these are the parts that are tempting to skip that you should not skip. Um, you know, fill out all the details in the about section and the description. Um, you know, the about section is really the first place that a lot of people on Facebook go when they're looking at businesses to get information about you. So having it all there is important. Um, you just click the edit page info on the top menu and then you can share all the important information about your business. So you have a basic profile up and going, but now you need to do something with it before you start inviting people to come see it. So um, it's important to, um, you know, use features like telling your story. Um, there's a, a part in your profile where um, you can add a longer description for your business. Um, and you can, you know, talk a little bit more about, you know, how you're going to interact with people through your Facebook page, offer them a compelling reason to stick around, set expectations, um, enter a photo, headline, and some text. And then start posting some valuable content. Uh, you can create some of your own posts or you can share relevant content from other thought leaders in your industry. And now you can publish the page and you're ready for prime time. There are other ways to optimize your page once it's been posted. If you're interested in those things like, you know, adding a call to action button, um, which gives people another way to contact you for more information or, you know, to be directed to your website, things like that. You can pin a post if there's a particular post that you've made that you find really relevant that's sort of evergreen or really says a lot about your business, gives a good first impression, you can pin that to the top of your feed. So when people visit your Facebook page, they'll see that post first. Um, so you can also uh, like different pages as your own. I mean, it is a social network and part of that is you're going out and liking and commenting on other people's posts and pages. So it's a way of building community, um, connecting with other businesses, maybe in your industry that could provide additional value for your followers without being a direct competitor. Um, so it's really easy to like other pages. When you go to someone's page and you want to like it, just click the three dots uh, at the top of the page. Just make sure, you know, there's usually a couple different ways to like it once you have a business page as yourself or as the business. So make sure you're liking it as the business. And then those businesses will show up on your business page in the pages liked by this page section. Um, your settings. There's so many settings in Facebook. Um, you can really get into fine detail about who can administer the page, where are your posts visible. You can set up whitelists of, of words that are banned from the page. So if, if a comment someone makes has those words in it, it'll automatically be hidden. And then you can, you know, unhide it, but that way, you know, you're being able to review things. Um, you can see people who have liked your page. You can control your notifications, etc. So it's really your behind the scenes console for everything, every adjustable parameter available to you. So it's probably good to go through this when you first set up your page and, and acquaint yourself. Another great tab is the insights tab. This is where you get to dig into information about your audience. Um, and then you can find out more about posts that are performing well, the types of content they're interested in, which can kind of inform your strategy going forward. Um, how are they interacting with your brand, that type of thing. 
And then it's important to make sure you're linking to your Facebook page from other web pages. Um, backlinks really help boost the credibility of your Facebook business page, uh, and it will help improve your search engine ranking. So um, it also will help direct new potential followers to your page. So you should include a link to your Facebook page at, at the bottom of maybe your blog posts or wherever on your website it's appropriate. Um, and encourage any other customers or, or companies, excuse me, or bloggers to do the same when you collaborate with them. Um, there are also plugins that you can install on your website to actually embed your Facebook feed into your website, which encourages a cross promotion of your website and your Facebook channel. Um, Facebook ads has announced um, some grants, so I wanted to uh, make you all aware of that as well. Um, if you're interested in advertising with Facebook, um, they're going to be granting assistance to small businesses affected by the COVID-19 outbreak, and they'll additionally offer some cash grants. So the people that are eligible are small businesses in over 30 countries, pretty broad. Um, in order to find out more, you can sign up for email updates on eligibility and how to apply. Um, I have a link that I can share out uh, with everyone after this. Timing, um, they're going to be taking applications in the next uh, couple of weeks. And I did also want to mention real quick um, that they have also uh, provided some additional resources. They have, they launched a business resource hub, which I can send a link to everyone. Um, that's really to help people manage business disruption during COVID-19 with tools like a business resiliency plan, how to stay in touch with customers, things like that. And they're offering one-on-one uh, -on -one business support and allowing people to connect directly with the Facebook marketing expert. So I'll make sure I get those links to you all. Okay, and the last little bit I wanted to talk about, I think we're doing okay on time, um, is you know using some uh, tools for remote collaboration um, in order to help your teams you know manage your your social media strategy. Um, I, I really recommend taking advantage of scheduling tools like Sprout Social, Buffer, Hootsuite. They're all really great at social, social listening, scheduling posts, managing comments and messages from various streams, assigning posts to team members. It's a really convenient way to do everything in one place. There are some, you know, idiosyncrasies with the platform sometimes, like tagging pages in LinkedIn sometimes, things like that. But in general, it does make things a lot easier. Um, also wanted to mention that right now Hootsuite is offering free access to their professional version of their software until July 1st to organizations in affected industries. And they're also providing a lot of really great content like training videos um, about you know, how to help you engage with your audience, how to create content efficiently and how to manage crisis communication. So I can share that link with you as well. Another option is just to schedule posts directly into the platform. Um, for example, you can use Creator Studio in Facebook to um, manage posts, publish posts, manage comments, look at insights, et cetera, from all of your Facebook and Instagram pages in one place. Um, you should also make sure you've downloaded and installed any phone apps that will help you uh, respond to comments quickly, like the Facebook Pages app or, you know, the LinkedIn app and, of course, the Hootsuite app if you use that platform. So just making sure that you're responding quickly to things. Okay, so I know we've covered a lot of stuff today. Hopefully we've uh, been able to give you all some food for thought, some helpful tips and tricks, some good strategies, and haven't overwhelmed you too much, but um, I wanted to make sure I left a decent amount of time for questions, so we can look at those. Okay, um, Bree, thank you so much for uh, this session. That was fantastic. Oh, and Eric is on, uh, but uh, everybody is muted at this time. Uh, so I will just start with a couple of questions that were in the um, chat, uh, just so they're recorded because the chat is not recorded and uh, we'll go from there. So um, one of the questions was, 
how exactly do you measure uh, sentiment? And Carrie, thank you for answering that, but can you talk a, a little bit about that so we have it on the recording? Sentiment is really measured by the types of comments that people are making about your brand and on Facebook by the reactions. You know, people can wow, people can cry, people can love, people can, you know, it's not just a like anymore. So, you know, it's really, you know, figuring out like how, you know, which, how many of your comments are positive versus negative comments. So it's how people feel about your brand. And is there a tool to capture that or do you have to like physically go and count, you know, how many thumbs no, up? Well, definitely in the insights tab, it'll show you uh, the types of reactions people have had on different posts. So on Facebook, okay. that's, that's the way to do it. LinkedIn, it might be a little bit more manual because there aren't different types of, you know, likes yet, but, um, but Facebook makes it pretty easy. Fantastic. And uh, as a little plug, uh, one of the international companies that we had, um, Look Me, was measuring uh, sentiment. So we'll, we'll uh, have to do And Some people are dropping off, but I wanted to give enough time uh, for those Q&A. Uh, another question was, can you quantify success on the create and distribute content? So I think maybe, you know, is this some measure, measure sticks that, you know, you can gauge yourself on, am I doing all right or not? You know, do you have any tips on that? Yeah, I think, you know, different platforms, you're going to probably want to look at different things. Um, I think like Facebook and LinkedIn engagements, really one of the metrics we look at the most, especially for organic posting. Um, if you're driving traffic to your website, you can look in, in Google Analytics to see how much traffic is going to your website from those channels. Um, I think, though, it really depends. And, you know, the types of, like, how often you post, the times of day you post. I mean, there, there used to be rules about that or sort of guidelines, but, you know, everyone's home all day now, and it's really kind of been thrown out the window. So I, my suggestion is to try a few different things and go back and look and see how they're performing. And like I said, the insights um, portion of Facebook is good for that. And there are some measuring tools in LinkedIn in the back end too. Um, I'm really passionate about metrics. I could do a whole nother talk on those, but, um, you but might yeah. take you up on that. <laughs> yeah. Engagement's really, you know, the, the one you're going to want to look at for social, for organic social. So if I can rephrase it a little bit, so what you're saying is you measure uh, against yourself first. So you look at your numbers and want to make sure they're going up. Yes. And then maybe you can look at industry standards if there yeah. are such things. And yeah, there are benchmarks and things that you can look at. Um, it's a little bit, those are more for paid advertising, um, for organic, for organic posting, it's a little more vague. So I usually, you know, with our clients, mainly measure against ourselves. You know, I think that's the best way to approach it. Oh, fantastic. And then I had another question uh, just on behalf of the startups, because, um, you know, we have a lot of science and technology-based startups. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, I'm, I don't have a brand. I'm not Coca-Cola. So why should I bother uh, being on social? Yeah, I think, again, that's why I wanted to delve into that personal profile part of LinkedIn so much. Because you are a brand. I mean, like it or not, you stand for something, you know. And so, I mean, people use that term personal brand a lot. And so I think that that's really important to represent yourself well and then use that to represent your company well. Um, and why bother is because if you don't, you're really missing out on a lot of the, you know, uh, opportunities that are available to you. Um, I think especially in that case through LinkedIn, that would be a platform that would be well worth the time and energy that it takes to get it set up and going so fantastic uh one of the things that i like to uh look at is um also you know view your investors potential partners potential employees as your audience so you also want to um you know have a presence for that do you have any more to add to that no, I think that's good. And I think, you know, again, we talked about joining groups and I think you were saying that there was a, um, a group invite that was sent out to some, so maybe people could take advantage of that. Um, but yeah, starting conversations and being seen as a thought leader is a really important way to do that and getting visibility amongst your peers and competitors and things like that. LinkedIn's a really great tool for that. Okay, fantastic. 
Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Dave is saying uh, he's using Hootsuite to track analytics when he's running a campaign. He's using Pixel My Site uh, when it integrates with Facebook mm -hmm. and Google Analytics. Can you talk a little bit more about those? We definitely uh, use uh, Hootsuite to track metrics. Um, we use a different um, uh, software called Deftly. Um, and it's more about, so our job is connecting the dots for our clients. So things like Hootsuite and Sprout Social and Google Analytics will show you the raw data. Uh, what we do is then sort of connect the dots for people and tell them what that data means to their business. But if you, you know, are fine just going in and looking at the raw data, Google Analytics, uh, Facebook Insights, um, LinkedIn has some insights available within the platform, but Hootsuite has pretty great capability of doing that too and can actually just run reports for you, generate them automatically once you hook up your social profiles. Okay, uh, so Dr. Dev says, can you spell out the tool? I know it said, sounded like Deftly to me. So. No, it's D-E-F-T-L-Y. Like I maneuvered that situation pretty deftly. All right, thank you. Thank you for that. And yes, everybody, if you want to uh, type in your questions into the group chat, um, if you don't know how to do that, raise your hand, which should be on the bottom of your thing. And if that doesn't work, I can, uh, I could dare to unmute everybody, but it might be a little bit of a mess. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. There we got it. D <laughs> as in Jock, E as in Emily, F as in Frank, T as in Tom, L as in Lima Bean, N Y as in Yes. I like that you included Lima Bean in there. That's the only proper name I remember. My husband used to be military and, you know, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, are there any more questions? Let me see. I don't know, Rachel, I like dare to unmute everybody. Um, it's fine either way I'm all right I'm gonna unmute everybody but please you know don't all talk at once so there everybody should be unmuted any more questions for Brie while we have her here for another couple of minutes I think they're just digesting I've they are digesting so I've really inundated everyone with a lot of information so So in that case, uh, I will leave it at that. It looks like people are, that's the other thing I noticed is, is with Zoom, you know, everything is on the hour, on the half hour, and people literally have to leave at one o'clock to yeah. the one o'clock Zoom meeting. So right, right. Exactly. Um, thank you so much, Bri, for doing no this. Thanks, Anita. This was actually, yep, and I'm getting a lot moving on to uh, other other meetings so uh you know <laughs> great um we will make this available online or you know for our companies um hopefully i can figure out how to edit the recording a bit if necessary but again thank you so much brie and we have your uh, contact information there so if anybody has any specific questions either uh, reach out to myself, to Sherry or Eric, or directly to Brie. And uh, like I said, I might take you up on the metrics session. So as we're planning and seeing, getting our sentiment back from our clients of what they're interested in. Okay. Thank you so much. And Sherry, I see you on here as well. Thank you for um, doing this session for us. It's been really insightful and helpful. No problem. Great. We're happy to do it. <laughs> all right fantastic and with that i will try to find the end meeting button that's always a challenge for me. <laughs> and uh we'll see you guys later thank you so much thank you thank you all right bye-bye